welcome everyone to another episode of the Weekly Orbit. We've got this week's headlines for Rocketpool, the week ending the 19th of May, 2023. I'm Pat, and my normal host, WAC, is on a special assignment. So this week, I'm joined by a special guest reporting in live from Santiago, Chile. Nicholas. <laughs> We're on that in a moment. Hola. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> So, but first, this week's headlines. It's been a month since Rocket Pool Atlas app upgrade. How successful has it been? Uh, Lido withdrawals are live. Will Rocket Pool see some reshuffled ETH come its way? Flash stake and Gravita have begun operations util utilizing our ETH. And the index co ops DeFi Pulse Index has added RPL token to it. And finally, in our community corner, we'll take a look at Nicholas's node setup and backup system he's devised. All this and weekly stats, but first, Nicholas, hello, hola from Chile. Hello, hello. How are you? Yes, it's, uh, it's pretty nice weather down here. And yeah, so we just arrived at a wedding this weekend and uh, it was quite a quite a haul to get down here, but uh, I'm happy first to, class. to be here. <laughs> we, we were, after we got screwed over and a flight canceled and we had to stay at a two-star Radisson, and then <laughs> I was able to upgrade for not very much money to the first class. So yeah, we did actually get to lay down for 10 hours and nice. sleep all the way here. So yeah, you get spoiled traveling like that. That's, you didn't cash in not, any RPL to buy those upgrades. I did not do that. No, I used my dirty, dirty fiat. I see. <laughs> nice. Well, we are going to... Uh, get into this week's headlines. And first, you know, we usually go over our stats <clears throat> for the week, and it's been a good week. Um, we'll get the deposit pool. This measures the amount of ETH deposited in to mint our ETH. And we'll go over to the daily deposits. So as you can see, the last few days have been really killer. Um, so last week, was the 12th we started at 11,152 last friday and it's been buzzing along and then the last couple of days um we've had 8,931 8, eth yesterday and then today already over 9,000 eth deposited so i'm guessing we're going to be over 10,000 by the end of the may 19th uh on a weekly we've got I mean, twenty eight over twenty eight thousand in just the last week, and monthly, we're at seventy eight thousand ETH for May, and it's the nineteenth of the month. So, Nicholas, big prediction. I'll put you on the spot right away. Are we going to hit over a hundred thousand <laughs> minted our ETH for May? I, <laughs> I I'm going to say no. Oh, really? We we'll, only we'll got ten days, maybe. Oh wow! Nineties. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but it, I, I, I don't actually really pay too close attention to these numbers. What I, what I do is I like to see the sentiment is growing and that people are, the word's getting out and people know what it, what's up and they're starting. You know, it's encouraging to see that people are like, oh, I, I've heard about that or I, yeah, I was gonna. I had been sticking with Lido and I didn't know, know what that meant when I first showed up on my ledger a year ago and I just pressed the button and now I'm, after being doing it, I can go, oh yeah, that makes sense. I need to get out of there and come over here in order to do that. And I've got to buy RPL if I'm going to do that or RD. And so it's, it's seeing them go up means that people are paying attention and they're finding value in it. And that's, that's a, that's what's important to me because right. I'm, I'm there are some people that are going to be like oh, I'm going to do a short term thing it's like no the, the, this isn't for short term stuff this is you, you want to be here for a long time this is sure. the, the future yeah the big picture is it's working you know the, yeah it's worth it's doing right. the thing and it it is it's kind of remarkable and I, I I came in after those guys had already been working on it for years and I I sat out and I. <laughs> I literally went back in time in Medium and I read every single article those guys wrote. I'm like, man, what, what was I doing all this time? These guys are really working on this and thinking through all these, all these economic details, and and it's working. And it's just it's amazing to me that you know I write software for a living and 
I, I make lots of mistakes, but I can go fix mine. But you can't fix them when you put them out <laughs> on, on the blockchain. You screw it up. You're like in real trouble. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's take a look at our RPL for the week. And it's been a good week as well. Um, we look at the ratio, of course, uh, comparing yeah. RPL to ETH. Uh, last, let's go to, uh, I think it's on, let's move the seven day. Yep, there we go. So the last week, <clears throat> we were at about 0 0.025 on the ratio. And currently, we're at 0 0.027. So if my math is right, that's I did the math earlier, and it's about a 7% increase. RPL has a, a, a appreciated against ETH, which is outstanding. Um, so we've had a real bump this week. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I've stopped looking at it. Most of these charts with dollars anymore, and now it's it's like, where is this against the the truly hard assets? And I, mm -hmm. I'm sitting on, I'm over collateralized at the moment, and I want to turn some of that in ETH so I can set up some more mini pools. And it was understanding uh, how do you figure out the snapshot thing that happens? So they take a snapshot at some point, and I still don't know the details to know. What, what is the ratio? Because the ratio could be changing right now, but mm -hmm. I, I want to try and sell it as high as it can be. And then I realize, oh, I don't have to rush because that snapshot stays still for about 19 hours. So so they said. And so mm -hmm. I, I, this week I, I got up there, yeah, the point, 0 0.028. And I'm like, all right, let's let's take, start taking a little bit off. And I set up a few mini pools. So nice. I felt, felt good about that. Yeah. And well, not, not all of it because I'm open, yeah, in the right. next few weeks or so. We're going to talk about your uh, mini pools uh, in a, in a, later on in the show, but um, let's go on to uh, Jasper had made a thread for the uh, Atlas anniversary. It's been one month, and he goes over some uh, stats that you know over the last thirty days. Where are we with this upgrade? Well, at on April seventeenth, our ETH supply stood at two hundred thirty three thousand, and one month later. It's grown to three hundred thirty-six thousand, which is a hundred over a hundred thousand increase. That's a forty-four percent increase in just thirty days. Uh, that's outstanding. Um, the amount of ETH staked. Uh, there was four hundred eighty-three thousand ETH locked from node operators. One month later, it's grown to six hundred fifteen thousand. That's an impressive twenty-seven percent in just the last thirty days. Uh, number of node operators has grown from 2300 to 2659. That's 359 new operators, which uh, Jasper makes note is 13 times Lido's entire set. I think they've got 29 Ooh. operators. So I, all in all, last 30 days, the Atlas seems to be, as you said, big picture, it's working. Yeah, there was another, there's another page that somebody had posted and it's a very simple page with just few stats on it but basically oh it's going to be 800 hours to get through the queue but if you want to leave it's quick it's like you can you can exit out but to get in is very very long wait and it's like oh nobody's nobody wants to leave it's and, and as somebody else said it's like oh it's the hottest club in town Every, the queue is huge no one's trying to get out everybody's trying to get in and so that's that's a good situation it's yeah speaking of that, strong i've got um if you go to whenmerge.com, they've got a great uh, updated uh, queue stat. Yeah, so okay. Right yeah. now, and validators entering the queue <laughs> right. are over 59,000 validators <laughs> are waiting. And there's one yeah. right. <laughs> waiting there to wants to get out. <laughs> <laughs> this is the longest amusement park ride line you'll ever be in. Yeah, uh, it's 30, exactly. Right now, it's over 32 days long. I guess, yeah. you know, you wonder, are we going to, is this going to get continue worse. the six figures? Are we going to be a hundred thousand? Yeah, this is what I don't, I don't know. And these are the things that I wonder, you know, the guys that have been thinking through all these details for so long, like, where, yeah, how does this go? I don't know. And that's why I, I kept looking at it. Like, well, let's just, let's just get in the line. You know, you yeah. can't, I, I can't sit around waiting for it to get shorter. Cause maybe it never does. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. All right. So one of the big headlines this week was Lido withdrawals went live. They upgraded to the V2, I think it was on Monday. And so there was 
some expectation that some folks would withdraw um, Lido, I'm sorry, their eighth that they stake with Lido and put it in different places. Would Rockapool benefit from that? Um, I think that over time, I, I just find it hard to believe that Lido is going to maintain such a high market share with so many competitors, you know, over time, it's going to yeah. kind of even out a little bit. So they got um, in, they were, they were first and and that's why yeah. everybody was in there, but sure. There's a, there's a great uh, dashboard here, which I'm going to click on. Uh, it's let's find the link. There it is. App this parsec. And I'll share this in the show notes. This, this is a live, it gives you a live meter of the uh, ETH that's been withdrawn from Lido. And we'll go to the May 19th. Let's go load it up. And let's see. We're at, you can see at 9 a.m. Uh, May 19th, there's 400 uh, ETH withdrawn. So this kind of gives you a, just a, it's a dashboard. If you're curious how much ETH is being withdrawn, when and where, it's a good dashboard. And if we, I think there's some substantial withdrawals. There, there's one on the 18th of May. <clears throat> there's over a thousand in one, you know, segment. And I think if we go back to the 15th, I think is when they did it. You'll see some spikes here over time. So yeah, there's some there's some people withdrawing, <clears throat> and uh, Tom Wan made a tweet. <clears throat> um, a tweet thread regarding one of these big whale withdrawals. I think they took, I could be wrong, but it's somewhere around like 9,000 ETH. And bottom line was they took about 7,400 of it and put it in the rocket pool. And then they scattered the rest of it um, amongst wow. finance, a frax, some back into Lido. So, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm expecting that over time, we're going to see people, um, you know, transferring some ETH. I don't think a lot, of, I don't, you know, Lido will probably retain the vast majority of it, but there's going to be, you know, on the edges, people are going to be withdrawing and hopefully Rocket Pool is going to get some of that, which it appears we are. Was was Lido talking about making permissionless validators that anybody could run or I, I don't keep up with that. I, I thought I had read that they were thinking of that. Swell well, Network was also talking about that, but now, now they're just doing liquid stuff yeah they're they're on a roadmap uh to become more permissionless uh yeah. more trustless i am not an expert with lido but they're you know i the way i look at a lido is there's somewhere between the, you have your solo stickers over here and then you have rocket pool and then you've got lido and then you've got like your centralized operator so <clears throat> lido is somewhere between the centralized operators like coinbase and rocket pool so the more decentralized you go on the spectrum the better yeah definitely it just takes so it takes a long time to to come to terms and learn all that stuff to realize oh man rocket pool really is the that's the one that's the one we're all trying to it's the reason we're all here but yep. it, if, you, if you're just looking at numbers and yields and you're just like i want high apr then it, I, I see those fights in the room we're like we need to get the apr numbers up so that people will want to come in and, and so they don't have time to learn all this stuff. Right. Um, I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's so much, so interesting to watch, but yeah, uh, rocket pool is definitely doing it the right way. And I think we're seeing everybody go, Oh yeah, that does make sense. We're going to move yeah. into that. And so with all this newly minted our ETH, um, there's been a new, wave of integrations in this and DeFi protocols and this kind of the, the bigger the bigger big <clears throat> the big issue you see here is you have if you have increased liquidity more DeFi protocols will want to integrate your token and if you get more utility from your token more people will mint it which will mean more liquidity which means more DeFi protocols it's this work rocket pool is right in the middle of this upward spiral yeah. Uh, because of new liquidity, new integrations, uh, new utility. And Flash Stake uh, launched, and it's one of the newest uh, DeFi protocols. I think we're going to see more of these where <clears throat> you, uh, folks with LSTs, liquid staking tokens, they're earning yield. 
um, are going to be using uh, protocols such as flash stake. So what flash stake does, they take your, you put your RETH in, you, you decide, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to install it for about 90 days. Flash stake says, okay, we'll give you 90 days of your yield back immediately. And you can take that yield and then go buy more crypto or do whatever you want with it. Because it's mathematically uh, guaranteed you're going to get that back. So they're, it's not that they're really taking much of a risk to give you all your money up front. They know they're right. going to get it. Yep. So you forsake your, you know, when you're going to forsake your future yield and take it right up front. And so there's an example here where, you know, if you took, um, uh, where is it? Yeah. Well, there's a, a, a click on the thread. <clears throat> In this case, you know, you take out, you put in a hundred RETH, and then you decide the duration. You can pick the number of days, and then you instantly receive. In this example, three point one eight five uh, ETH. So uh, you can do this on large. You know, if you have a whale, you have a thousand RETH. You could do this if you're, you know, a small fish. You know, you've got five ETH. You can do this, ten ETH, whatever you want. So pretty interesting. Um, I'm not a DeFi expert, but I know that there are a lot of folks out there really excited about. Flash stake and Gravita. I yeah, I don't I don't know much at all, unfortunately. <laughs> There's another example. Um, this whale put a thousand R ETH in and <clears throat> through 90 days, they immediately got 30 R ETH back. Okay, then they take that 30 mm. and they can do other stuff with um, it. They and they do can, all right. Just keep leverage yeah. leverage to the to the falls apart. Right. <laughs> then they have to go to jail. But you know stuff like this is, I think, why partly why STE took off so quickly because you could do so much with it in DeFi, and um, I think we're, gonna, we're starting to see that with our ETH. Yeah, and the, that's what Gra Gravita was a similar thing. Yeah, Gravita launched as well. Um, we covered them last week in the uh, weekly orbit, so. Uh, if you want to check out last week's episode, Wack talks a lot more, goes into detail. He uh, interviewed. Um, oh, yeah. I did Brett, watch his interview. Yes. Yep, one yeah. of the co founders of it. Oh. And it's, a, it's worth your time if you're interested. Check it out. The final headline for this week was the index co ops DPI index, which is the DeFi Pulse Index, which is a measurement of some of the top DeFi protocols. It's added. Uh, RPL into its index, uh, which is exciting. They added Lido as well. Mm -hmm. um, this resulted in, I think that, you know, they bought up several thousand or more RPLs or RPL tokens to add to the index, which is good. Um, you know, adding it to, you know, RPL getting some, we've been talking about so much about our ETH integrations, but it's nice to see RPLs getting some love. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole other thing. I, I don't know much about these indexes either. I'm I'm, I'm always thinking about the, the the bottom layer stuff, and and then God, oh, this index would make a lot of sense. Although there's still human beings deciding what should be in the index, and so it's sure. not as it doesn't feel as good to my Asperger's mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, well. Let's move on to your your story. Um, we mentioned, you know, somewhere here you you set up um, recently some mini pools. Um, you're somewhere in this fifty nine thousand Q. And, yeah. And but you've been uh, over the last couple of months experimenting with uh, setting up some nodes or setting up a node and a backup node, and you've been playing with different hardware. Uh, different setups. So why don't you take us through your story? I think that a lot of listeners can, they're going through the same thing right now, deciding what kind of machine should I use? Uh, what kind yeah. of backup? You know, what, where do I, where I go with this? So why don't you tell, tell us your story? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, would, I, would, I want to draw stuff, but I won't be able to do it real time. And I'll screw it up. But anyways, yeah. And I, What's a little different about my situation is probably that in 2017, I decided to sell everything I owned and I took off and joined this group and traveled around the world for a year. 
and uh, learning how to just completely disconnect and be fully remote all the time. So I had my job as a software engineer and I could do that anywhere and learning how to do that while traveling and then just getting, learning to unwant stuff and get rid of, getting rid of all the things that, that could be attached to. And so I've, I've been doing that since basically. And so now it, it's come to this point where I, uh, the end of 2021, <clears throat> I, I needed to, uh, this stuff was driving me crazy and I didn't understand thinking. And so I ended up taking a whole month off and just sitting down and learning. I'm like, what am I going to do? How does this work? What is Solus thinking? I see it. I don't quite get it. And then, then Rocket Pool is sitting over here. What is that? And I start reading and going just deep into things and realizing, all right, this is the thing. Rocket Pool is the thing. But I can't, I don't have a house. I can't go get a, a box and put, put it together. And I hadn't done that in forever. Like I, I, I haven't built a computer in forever. Now I just go buy the MacBooks and I don't think about it because it's commodity. I don't care. I'm trying to write software. I don't want to deal with the, this, the hardware stuff. And so I, I had found all nodes. And then <clears throat> again, it's like, I don't know who these people are. Can I trust these people? And how do you know? And then and I'm just, there's no one around to, to help explain any of this stuff. Uh, and uh, somehow I had, uh, I don't know where I, where, where I dug up the most information that made me feel confident about all nodes, but but somehow I was able to get a call on Zoom with the CTO of all nodes. He was like, "Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, we can chat if you're worried about it." I'm like, "Holy crap! All right, let's do that." So we got on a call in 15 minutes, and he's just explaining, "This is how it works. This is what's going on," and it's made me feel really good. All right, let's do that. So, so yeah, that was the first year of just running on all nodes. So it's like I don't have to know everything right now. But I can start to get, I can be involved. My ETH isn't just sitting there doing nothing. I can go make some mini pools and go, all right, I can see what's happening. And then and then you you start to get this sense of like, this is how it works. And so a year of doing that with the screens that all know built and you're, you're clicking through buttons and you're doing stuff, but you still don't know what it's doing. And so in the back of my mind, I'm like, I got to do it for real because I still don't understand. And so then I go to ETH Denver and that's where you and I meet. And I, mm -hmm. I go to the thing and meet up with the rocket pool guys. And then after that, after listening and seeing you guys and, and watch some more presentations, I was like, all right, now I've got to do it for real. So then it was basically go back home and then just start diving in further, reading all the docs like 20 times to try and understand things and understanding hardware. It's like, oh, man, I don't, I don't remember how to do this stuff. Um, so I just started like getting, getting, I, I see what everybody's doing and, and I, I see uh, Joe's, um, uh, draw a blank. What's the name of the the Promethe? The, what is it? Oh, Pro Proteus. Proteus. I was going to say Prometheus. Yeah. <laughs> Proteus. <laughs> and uh, that's an alien. I saw movie. that. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'd like to get one of those, but it, you know, he's going as fast as he can. I'm not going to get one. And uh, and I'm so used to using a Mac, and so I'm like, well, I'm just going to go get an older Mac One, M1. And I'll see what I can do with that. And the docs are there and they explain how to do it. But um, so I set that one up, but they're expensive and you can't get big drive. You need two, ter two terabyte drives. And so you have to go get an external one. And then you, I, I get that plugged in. And then it's it's just all this hassle to try and get it just right. Oh, I need it to, if the power goes out, because see what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it at my girlfriend's house and I need to be able to go. I'm going to be gone all the time. Maybe I come back a few months here and there and I can check on it, but I want to make sure it's at an actual house on an actual ISP. It's not in, because I could clearly go get a rack somewhere or a virtual machine in a data center, but that's not helping. And I want to do, I want to do the right thing. So sure. this box needs to be able to power needs to be able to go out because it happens in Texas. Now they're on their own power grid and all kinds of weird shit happens. And so when that power goes out, I need to come back up and I, I can't have, I can't be calling anybody to go over there and press any buttons on it. So, I, and I overthink everything times 10. And so I'm like, I gotta make sure this is, this is good. So I'm, I'm trying to get that Mac to work and it's, man, this is, it's, 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 it'll, it'll work. But if I was sitting next to it all day, every day, fine, no mm -hmm. problem. But if it's not a thing you want to do, if you're, if you can't be around it. And so. I, I went and got one of the, the Geekcom uh, Intel NUX. And so then I just install, instead of doing any 
crazy virtualization or anything is just install Linux on it. Just do the normal thing. Just follow the directions, right? right. Like those guys on Rocket Pool have written that documentation and it's got every detail in it. And I'm trying to like find a way to skip from the 101 class to the 901 class for some reason. And I'm always like, I can't figure this out. It's like, yeah, you've got to go to 101, 201, 301. So I'm like, all right. So I just got the box and I followed the instructions and man, it was, it was there. And it, I, I'm not trying to save money because this thing has got to run and it's got to secure my wealth essentially. So I'm mm. not going to spend, Oh, should I spend three and five hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars? No, just spend eight hundred bucks. Get the good one. There's the good one. Just get it. Mm -hmm. Um, don't don't let don't let that thing. You don't want to worry about it. I don't want to worry about like oh the RAM might go bad or the drive. Just get the good ones that sure. you know are going to work. And then I got that up and running and uh, got a battery backup, uh, which is pretty straightforward. F figured out how to do that bio stuff again, where you're getting in there to say I'll make sure the power turns on automatically when we reboot. I got some, uh, <laughs> to, to the end that I go and get those um, remote control plugs that you can do for smart home. And I've got them plugged into that with the, the router and everything. So like I can pull my phone up right now and just unplug them, plug them back in if I want to do that. Um, and so that that was up and running, but I didn't stake any money to it because I, I still didn't trust myself. And so, so you, then you I went back. Around, like on the, do you just play yeah, around with so the kind of for So I've got the, yeah, so I've got the dashboard, the Grafana dashboard's up. And I'm, I can at least see it running. I can see the temperatures um, and I can get SSH into it. Um, I've installed tail, it's called tail scale. I've got that in all of them. And basically that creates a, a private network between them. And so there's no, there's no access to them from the outside world. You'd have to be in the house. And even then you'd have to, to know some more than the average. You couldn't just hammer on it. So with the tail scale and so I can, I can run this little client on my machine here and I can see all of my uh, my machines and, and get to them directly without having to do a bunch of crazy uh, network settings. So, while, so that, while you're in South America, you can remotely I can, manage I can your hardware back yeah. in North America. And so then I was like, okay, it's running. I can get to it. I see it. I don't know if I feel super comfortable yet, but I, I need to figure out this fallback thing. And so I get go home to my mom's for the next month or so. And I, I just order a different Mac and I'm like, all right, mom, I'm going to set this all up at your house. She doesn't know anything. And I, I get the, I get pretty much the same setup at her house. And now I can make them fallbacks to each other. And so I, they're both running and I can get to them from anywhere. And it, it's still, it, it, no matter what you do, I never feel a hundred percent until you finally just have to go screw it. Let's, Let's pull the trigger. And so when did you when did you pull the trigger? Probably live? probably a week ago, probably about a week ago. And like when it was at 0 0.028, a little bit before that, I had some I had some RPL laying around and I I just staked it and then I had some ETH and I'm like, let's make an, an LEB eight. Mm -hmm. And then and then I'm, I'm like, okay, I did it. Yay. And then I waited, I saw 0 0.028, and then I sold some more R RPL and and set up some more LEDs. So they're sitting in the queue now, and I will we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I'm everything looks like it's running okay right now, and I don't know what it means when when uh, it starts validating because that's going to require more uh, resources. And maybe uh, when I look at all the numbers on that dashboard, I don't know exactly which ones I'm supposed to be looking at. And you, <laughs> you get in Discord, and those guys are just like know everything. You're like God, how can I? How can anybody keep up with you guys? The Rocket so, Pool Discord, like the support yeah. channel, it has a great reputation uh, around <laughs> the crypto world. Yeah. Right. I, it, I see it, it, you know, I'm in other, you'll be in other channels on Discord and someone has a uh, question regarding their staking or their Rocket Pool and they're on it. Oh, go to the support. They're great. Those guys. Yeah. Uh, they're on top of it. I just, it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so the, 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 the shorter story is that I, I did all nodes first. It helped me do it in a way that I felt comfortable and I didn't have to know too much. And then I'm like, I need, I want to learn it. And then you got to go do it. And you realize after that, oh, all this stuff that all nodes was doing for you to make it easy for you, it, I, you have to learn a lot more. But now it's like, I'm really starting to understand Ethereum and I'm understanding what the Rocket Pool guys have been doing all this time mm -hmm. and just understand it, under it. And it feels good. And now, now for the first time, I'm going to say no. I'm securing my wealth. 
that 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 box is mine and no i didn't ask for an api key from anybody i didn't mm -hmm. ask permission i just literally built this thing installed the software staked and plugged it into the wall and now all of a sudden it's doing its thing yeah and, I, and there's no one that can stop me from doing it and yeah that's it's amazing it's, that it's, that small little machine that's like yeah. this big is helping validate a network worth of hundreds of billions of dollars Right. Yes. And you're, yeah. You and wanna... it feels good. Yeah. And it makes you, it makes you proud and it makes you want to, yeah, you want to go look at it every day. Like, let me make sure I'm running this thing because I'm helping and I, I don't want to screw it up. And, you know, I want to make sure that I've, I've got different clients that other people aren't running so that I can help decentralize this thing is it, it all makes sense. So, but it, until you really sit down and mm. put yourself into it, then you, then you start to feel this different sense of pride because you, mm. you might not get from all nodes all nodes is like here's your money and like we'll do it for you but yeah now it's like oh i'm really i'm doing it yeah it feels cool. that's great well great story nicholas um that's <laughs> you've you're you, i think you've outlined your journey really well and um it sounds like you've got it all figured out <clears throat> oh, <man. And laughs> there's always more to learn right <laughs> oh my god now <laughs> Oh, I, I don't, I, I still don't feel, yeah, I'm still nervous, but I, I feel better. Mm. I left the house going, mm. all right, let's go to South America and see, see how well this works. <laughs> <laughs> if it all falls apart, eh, I get a flight home, I guess. But Yeah. Well, thanks for filling in for WAC, who's on, as I said, the special yeah. assignment, the baby assignment. Congrats and, uh, congrats on the new baby. Yeah. WAC. And I'm sure you are super tired right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. So Everyone, none of this was technical, financial, tax, any type of advice. It's just Nicholas and I talking about crypto and his uh, his his nuke journey. And um, <laughs> follow us on YouTube. Give us a like, subscribe. Uh, we're on your favorite podcasts. And we will see you all next week. And Nicholas, have a good time in right. South America. And Thank good you. luck with the nodes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ciao. All right. See you.